Hi friends, it's Monica and today I'm going to be recommending some diverse YA fantasy books that have strong females. Let's get right into it. I want to preface that the books I'm recommending here are either books I've read in the past and some books I have not seen as often on Bookstagram or on Booktube. And also these books are in no particular order. I also just want to apologize beforehand for any pronunciations of names that I might butcher, so I'm sorry about that. And as you can see, I got a new bookcase like a week ago, and I decided to do a rainbow theme with my books, and I'm loving how it looks. So that's just a little bit change in my background. The first book I want to mention is Forest of Souls by Lori M. Lee. So Forest of Souls is about a girl named Sersha who is currently training to be the next Queen's Royal Spy, which is a prestigious position. And Sersha does not come from a privileged background. She was actually raised in an orphanage, but she always had her best friend Sangeo. After a tragic event, her best friend is killed, but Sersha manages to revive her, and this then reveals Sersha's newly discovered shaman magical powers. So the thing about this one is the magic system is based on shaman magic and really one of the aspects I really liked about this fantasy world because it was a little bit different and unique to me. Why I like Saoirse so much and why I'm recommending this book, even though she may be some sometimes brash and hot-headed, but along her negative traits, let's say, she discovers along her struggles with understanding her newfound powers that Saoirse does have a lot more to offer than she previously thought. She also perseveres and doesn't stop at nothing to help her best friend. And this strong female friendship was one of the qualities of this book that made the fast-paced action matter more to me because you have more of an attachment to the characters themselves. There are also hints of potential romance interests, but they're not the main focus of this book. And this fantasy world is creepy and dark and atmospheric, so if you're looking for a fantasy book with strong female characters, you might want to pick up Force of Souls. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard of this series before. It's an Ember in the Ashes series, or the Ember Quartet, I believe it's called. So there's four books in the series. So Ember does take place in a brutal world where there are this group of people called the Scholars who are enslaved and live in harsh, poverty and the scholars have been overtaken by the martial empire who are the rulers of this world. We meet a scholar named Layla who infiltrates the Black Cliff Academy which is where the martial empire trains the new soldiers for their empire and just to keep control. So Layla infiltrates this place because she had her brother taken away and Layla wants to seek revenge and she does that with the help of the resistance. And that's basically the starting point of this fast-paced fantasy adventure throughout four books. I still have yet to read the last one, but of the three first books that I have read, I've enjoyed the emotional connections I've made with every character, and the story itself is so strong. It keeps you on the edge of your seat and you just want to keep on reading. So the reason why I did choose this one was because of Layla. What I love about Layla is that she's not the typical female protagonist in that she's scared. She's scared of approaching the situation, of joining the resistance to get her brother back, and she's thrown into situations that she's not familiar with because she comes from the scholars. She's trained to become a spy to ultimately bring down the martial empire. Layla has a strong sense of justice for those she cares about, and sometimes she might feel powerless in such an unforgiving world, but she does have that strength to carry on. The first book in the series is told from a dual perspective, so we follow Layla, who I just described, and we also follow Elias, who is part of the Martial Empire, and we also get his perspective on how brutal his upbringing is. And it's nice to see the different sides of the scholars versus the Martial Empire and how one actually affects the other. There's great diversity in the series with a coming of age story and the themes of duty and loyalty and also mentionings of defying an oppressive society. If you haven't picked up this series, I really urge you do because it's really 
grasping and it grips you in from right from the first page. The next book is part of a duology. It's The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. This one's based on a retelling of A Thousand and One Nights or also known as The Arabian Nights. It was nice for me to read more about the Middle Eastern culture. The premise of this book begins with a really young king whose name is Khalid who has a new bride each night but then the next morning this new bride is discovered to be murdered. We are following the main female character whose name is Shahrazad and her close friend has fallen into that new trap of becoming a new bride. So Shahrazad is then on a quest for revenge. So she does find herself in the king's palace to become the new bride but once she's in the king's palace and distracting the king by telling him fantastical stories each night, Shahrazad discovers that there's more to this story and she's fighting against her own growing feelings for Khalid. This one for me did qualify as a strong female character because Shahrazad, she is going into this situation that she knows what would be the outcome as she's seen with her friend and multiple other women who have married the king and who have wound up dead the next day. So to me, that is bravery. Her strength when she goes into the situation and then later on the compassion that she feels for Khalid's own situation and how he wound up in this pretty gruesome way of living is to me what makes Shahrazad such a strong character. This one I read through so quickly and I just had to know what happened next. The Wrath and the Dawn is lighter in terms of action sequences and serious topics but that doesn't detract from the quality of storytelling. If you're looking for a lighter fantasy read with a swooning romance and a captivating writing, I recommend The Wrath and Dawn. So the next book I actually do have a physical copy of, it's Children of Blood and Bone by Tommy Adeyemi. So this one does capture your attention and does not let you go until you've read every single page. <laughs> so this is based and inspired upon Nigerian mythology. One of the great things about this book that I really enjoyed is about the themes that were touched upon such as inequality and how authority figures can abuse their power. And in this amazing fantasy world, we do follow the strong female character in this book whose name is Zaili. So Zaili does remember a world filled of magic that was free flowing, but one night that magic disappeared. Now the world Orisha is in a state of unbalance and Zaili is a diviner. Diviners are magi who are people who have powers but diviners they have no access to their magic and they are currently being oppressed by the king of Orisha. Throughout this book we see how Zaili is a warrior and really headstrong even after the tragic events of her mother being killed in front of her when she was a child and experiencing how her people are being oppressed. She prepares herself for the upcoming battles with grace and ferocity to restore magic back to Orisha. I really loved reading how Zaili comes into her own person and is really hard working towards her goals to ultimately free her people from oppression and to restore magic to the world. So Children and Blood and Bone is a fantasy that has no co-writing, is action-packed, and has awesome characters. If you do want any of those things, you might want to pick this up. And I also do love how the hardcover has this gorgeous design here. And as always, there's also fantasy map, <laughs> which is always appreciated. The next book I'm going to be talking about is The Young Elites by Mary Lou. And this one's a little bit different than the other ones I've talked about because we are following an anti-hero in this one. I chose this one to recommend because I do personally like to see how if our main character gets these newfound powers, what if they become the villain instead of the hero? So that's really interesting for me. So technically she does qualify as a strong female but just in the opposite way of a hero. So the young elite starts off with a blood fever that spreads across the land and the blood fever affects and kills a lot of children. And we follow Adelina who is one of the few survivors of the blood fever. But the blood fever did leave strange markings on the survivors. In the case of our main character, Adelina, she now has silver hair and she lost one eye. As it turns out, those survivors of the blood fever has developed strange new powers with Adelina being one of the more powerful ones and they have now dubbed themselves the young elites and to either do 
crime or to do good. After Adelina rescues her little sister, Adelina doesn't know who to trust and that's where her downfall begins. She believes the ends justify the means and she becomes more bloodthirsty as she exacts revenge against Tehran who is a hunter and his ultimate goal is to eliminate all the young elites. Adelina embraces her so-called darkness but at the same time the other side of her who is urging her to do good instead is a really nice struggle that we see throughout the book. Obviously her being an anti-hero she does fall into the darker side. Her character's negative arc engaged me throughout the entire series. Personally, I did find the two warring sides within Elena to be fascinating, but maybe that's just me. And I think it's just a nice change from the typical fantasy book of the main character being always the goody two-shoes, so-called goody two-shoes hero. Overall, if you want an easy to read trilogy with dark heroes and intense will they won't they romances you should go check this one out so the next book i'm going to be talking about is a star touch queen by roshani chakshi so this one is another retelling and it's based on one of my favorite myths is hades and persephone but the author has mentioned that she has included several hindu mythologies that has influenced her retelling with a backdrop in Indian culture, the writing is lush, engaging, and overall really atmospheric all at once. This one is less action-based, similar to The Wrath and the Dawn, and it, there's more focus on romance. And I do like to break up my really hard, intense fantasy reads with more lighter, romantic fantasies. Now we're following Maya, who is the daughter of a powerful Raja. Horoscopes are used as a really powerful tool in this world and are a means of prophecy. For Maya, her horoscope has predicted that her marriage will be to death and as a result of that, her community ostracized her and cast her out as a sign of bad luck. But her father is really desperate to marry her off and Maya is then thrown into a world that has secrets hiding behind every corner, which I'm guessing is kind of the equivalent of the underworld. And here she does learn to be stronger and to question the status quo. And after growing up with so many people whispering behind her back, Maya is growing to become a woman who knows her own power from that little girl who didn't know how to be vulnerable. Throughout this book, Maya is more capable than she realizes and the romance story did aid her in her growth but that's just a part of her growth that helped push her out of her shell. I read this one a while ago but I remember I did really love the writing and how the characters' dynamics played off each other. So if you want a romance-based fantasy retelling, I think this one would be perfect for you. A quick honorable mention here is The Chain of Gold series or last hours trilogy by cassandra clare because i want to mention cordelia carstairs she is of persian descent and like most other female characters in the shadow hunters world cordelia is just a badass but also just to note that this um, particular trilogy is set in the late 1800s early 1900s so in london england i love the moments throughout chain of gold and chain of iron how cordelia grapples with her insecurities and how she overcomes them and how they contrast against her more warrior side of herself. I think I mentioned the series quite a few times in my videos already, but I just really love it that much. And I think that's everything for today, and I've mentioned quite a few books and series that you should all check out with strong female characters in diverse fantasy books. Thanks so much for watching, give me a big thumbs up, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell. Have a good day!